we are talking about how to buy a business with zero money down. So I did try to record this live a few weeks ago, but let's just say it did not come out as planned. Thanks for those who did join. The video is still up there so you guys can take a look to see how horrible it was. But I do appreciate the people that came in. And when I do this again, I will definitely be much more prepared and figure out the whole technology part of it. But I couldn't let that be the end of it because what we're talking about here is just too important to miss. So here's a polished up version. And trust me, you're going to want to stick around for this one. Did you guys know that over 10 million small businesses will change hands over the next decade? The wild part is that if they don't find a buyer, many of them will just close down. We're talking about profitable established businesses just disappearing. But here's where it gets interesting. What if I told you that you could step in and buy one of these businesses without putting a single dollar up front? No huge savings, no crazy loans, just you and the right approach. Sounds too good to be true, right? Well, it really isn't. I know because I've done it several times myself. I'm here to show you how, and it all comes down to understanding three key concepts that can turn this from a pipe dream into your reality. We're talking about strategies that minimizes your risk and maximizes your upside. And the best part with seller financing, you don't need to beg the bank for money. The seller becomes your bank. It's a game changer. So let's break down exactly how it works. Seller financing is one of the most powerful tools you can use to acquire a business without emptying your bank account. Here's how it works. Instead of you coming up with a massive sum up front or scrambling for a bank loan, the seller themselves act as your lender. You make payments directly to them over time. No complicated bank hoops and it often comes with more flexible terms. But how does it really play out? We will discuss three different examples. The first one, buying a local restaurant. So imagine walking into a busy neighborhood spot that's up for sale. The price tag is $300,000. Keep in mind, I'm using these examples as reference. You won't be able to just walk into a place and find a business for sale. Sourcing deals are very tough and it takes a lot of work. But going back to this restaurant that you walk in and is up for sale for $300,000, now, instead of writing a huge check, you don't have, you propose seller financing. You'll pay, let's say $50,000 upfront and spread the rest over five years with a modest interest rate. It's a win-win. The seller gets regular predictable payments and you walk in as the new owner without having to drain your entire savings. That's the simplest way to explain how seller financing works. One important thing to note is that the US Small Business Administration reports that 60% of all small business acquisitions involve seller financing. It's that common for a reason, because it works. Another example, take an IT service firm. Let's say you come across a small tech company valued at a million dollars. You're not interested in taking on a crushing bank loan to make this deal happen. Instead, you negotiate with the seller a 10% down with the balance paid over seven to 10 years at let's say a 5% interest rate. You even throw in performance incentives to show you're serious about growing and improving the business under your leadership. Here's the kicker. Many business owners, especially those nearing retirement, are open to deals like this because the other option is to just close your business down. A 2023 Inc. article highlighted how baby boomer owners are increasingly looking for ways to exit smoothly as they retire, creating a shift where long-term business owners are putting their companies up for sale. The article also pointed out that there's a growing interest of potential buyers eager to acquire these businesses, offering a perfect match for those owners looking to retire. This trend opens up a golden opportunity for you to seek out these businesses, take them over and offer the owner something meaningful, financial security and the reassurance that their legacy is in good hands, instead of simply letting the business close down with nothing to show for their efforts and years of hard work. This approach provides sellers with stability and a trusted successor, which is you. Here's another example. Let's say there's an e-commerce business generating $500,000 annually and the owner really, really wants to step back. You step in and you offer $20,000 up front and agree to pay the remaining amount over the next, let's say three years, based on the percentage of the business's monthly net revenue. This revenue sharing model ties your payments directly to how well the business perform. But why would both sides go for this kind of arrangement? For the seller, this approach offers immediate cash while keeping a stake in the business's success during the transition period. It's particularly attractive for sellers who believe in the ongoing potential of the business they built. They'll continue to benefit from its growth 
even after stepping back. This also acts as a hedge against a complete one-time sell where they might worry about the new owner's ability to maintain operations or the owner's ability to run the business successfully. By tying payments to performance, they gain reassurance that you're incentivized to keep pushing for growth. And let's face it, having ongoing predictable income can be a strong motivator, especially if retirement is looming or they're moving on to new projects. And for the buyer, tying payments to performance means you're not saddled with massive debt load right from the start. Your payments flex in line with how well the business is doing, reducing the pressure on cash flow during challenging months. Essentially, it aligns the financial burden with the actual business revenue, giving you a cushion to stabilize operations and reinvest for growth with without overextending yourself. Plus, you're sending a strong signal to the seller you believe in the business and you're committed to making it flourish. Distrust and transparency can lead to a smoother transition, helpful guidance from the seller during handover, and even better terms for you. According to data from Biz Buy Sell, 27% of sellers are willing to finance up to half of the sale price. That's some serious flexibility, driven by the mutual benefit and ongoing connection both parties maintain through revenue-based payments. This performance-based model creates a win-win where both buyer and seller are invested in the business's continued success, lowering risk and building a foundation of trust during the ownership transition. So how do you make seller financing work? Start by building trust. Sellers need to know you're committed to their business's future. Lay out a very solid plan. Show them your strategy and be transparent about your goals. Next, negotiate terms that work for the both of you. Interest rates, payment schedules, even performance-based adjustments. The more you tailor the deal, the more likely they'll be able to accept it. At the end of the day, seller financing transform the seller into your lender, letting you acquire businesses that might have seemed out of reach. And it's all about creating a win-win for both sides. Now that you understand the power of seller financing, the next step is what makes or break these deals? Negotiation. Getting the seller on board is more about just agreeing on a price. It's about crafting terms that work for the both of you, from interest rates and payment schedules to performance-based adjustments. Every detail matters. The better you tailor the deal, the more likely they'll say yes. So. How do you get to the yes? All right, let's talk about how to turn seller financing negotiations in your favor. At the end of the day, it's all about getting the seller to say yes to the terms that work for both of you. But how do you do that? It's not just about crunching numbers. It's about psychology, building trust, and showing a clear path forward. First, remember what we're really asking for here, trust. In Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss, he emphasizes that negotiation isn't about battling, it's about collaboration and building rapport. When you propose seller financing terms, the seller needs to believe you can deliver on what you're promising to them. So always start with empathy and a genuine curiosity about their goals. Ask questions like, what do you want to see happen to this business in five years? Or what's most important to you as you step away? These questions show you care more than just the deal. You're focused on preserving their legacy and creating a future they can trust. Once you know what matters to them, you can shape your offer around those needs. Now, let's talk terms. Unlike rigid bank loans, seller financing terms are highly flexible. This is a huge advantage. In The Art of the Deal by Donald Trump, there's a key takeaway. Know what the other person wants and find a way to give it to them at your price. That doesn't mean trickery. It means finding solutions that satisfies both sides. So offer terms that address their needs. For example, if cash flow stability is their priority, propose a steady monthly payment schedule over a longer period. That gives them predictable income while easing your burden. If they're concerned about performance, tie payments to revenue milestones. This way, they see the business's success firsthand. People love incentives tied to growth. It shows skin in the game and motivates both sides to collaborate. Another great tool is deferred payments. Offer a lower initial payment and a grace period before your major payments kick in. This can appeal to sellers who want to exit quickly but are willing to wait for steady income. But Let's not forget body language and tone. We all know that 70% of communication is nonverbal. So smile, make eye contact, and listen more than you speak. Don't forget the importance of making people feel heard and valued. When you present your terms, do it calmly, confidently, and don't rush through it. But Give them time to process. If they feel respected, they're more likely to reciprocate with a yes. Also, 
show your plan. Sellers are more willing to accept terms when they see you've thought this through. Outline how you'll grow the business, why your expertise matter, and how you'll honor their legacy. For many sellers, it's not just about the money. It's about seeing their hard work continue on. When you're transparent about your vision, it builds credibility and eliminates fear of the unknown. And finally, be flexible. If they counter with a different interest rate or want slightly different terms, be open to adjusting. My favorite book is Getting to the Yes by Roger Fisher. His main point is focus on interest, not positions. This means looking for creative ways to meet their needs without compromising your core goals. Be prepared to give a little to gain a lot. When done right, seller finance and negotiations become a win-win where you both walk away feeling secure, valued, and excited for what's next. With the right mix of empathy, clear communication, and creative solutions, getting to the yes becomes not just possible, but very, very likely. Now that you've crafted a deal that works for both you and the seller, it's time to make sure it's rock solid. But here's the hard truth. Without the right legal protection, everything you've worked for could unravel so fast. Contracts can break, disputes can flare, and hidden risks can come back to haunt you. Let's go over the key legal steps you need to take to protect your deal and keep it solid. Once you've agreed on the terms of your deal, it's crucial to make sure you protect what you've built. You don't want all your hard work and negotiation to come crashing down because of legal misstep. Here's why the right legal protection and structuring are non-negotiable. Imagine this, a buyer purchased a small manufacturing business using seller financing, thinking they'd struck the perfect deal. The terms were straightforward, repayments over let's say five years with a portion of the profits going back to the seller. But the agreement was full of so many different vague clauses. The buyer and seller had different interpretation of what profits actually meant, leading to disputes almost immediately. The seller accused the buyer of intentionally mismanaging finances to maximize profit-based payments. The buyer countered, claiming the terms were followed to the letter. This landed them both in court, where legal fees quickly outpaced any profits either had hoped to gain. Ultimately, the judge ruled in favor of the seller due to poorly defined contract terms a costly lesson in why legal clarity really matters. This scenario is more common than you think. Deals can unravel fast if the language is loose or the terms aren't crystal clear. That's why proper deal structuring and legal documentations are essential. You need to clearly define every aspect repayment terms, interest rates, contingencies for different scenarios, and what happens if something goes wrong. No room for guesswork. No room for vague handshake promises. To ensure your deal is rock solid, engage experienced legal counsel. It's tempting to cut corners and do it yourself, but that's a dangerous game. A good lawyer will draft comprehensive agreements that leave no room for ambiguity. They'll make sure the repayment schedule is clear and performance-based clauses are precisely defined and potential contingencies like what happens if the business underperforms? You don't want surprises later and neither does the seller. And here's a point many people miss. Just because you've come up with a creative financing structure doesn't mean it's automatically enforceable. Your lawyer's job isn't just to put the deal on paper, but to ensure it's legally binding and enforceable. For example, some states have very specific rules about seller financing terms, interest rates, and what constitutes a fair deal. Without the right expertise, you could accidentally cross the line and end up with a deal that gets invalidated in court. Here's another critical piece, include a dispute resolution process. No one likes to think about conflicts arising, but it's better to be prepared. Outline how disputes will be handled, whether through mediation, arbitration, or court action. So you and the seller have a clear path if things go south. This can save both time and money. Remember, you're not just signing papers, you're crafting a roadmap for your financial future. The right legal protection shield you from unnecessary risk and laid a foundation for a successful business transition. So don't skip on this step. Engage a lawyer who understands business acquisitions and creative financing. It's an investment that can prevent costly headaches down the road and give both you and the seller a peace of mind. In the end, protecting your deal with solid legal structuring isn't just about covering your bases. It's about building a deal that can stand the test of time, challenges, and changes. If this was helpful for you and you want more tips and real world examples on buying and building businesses, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications. I'd love to hear what you think. Drop a comment below. And if you have any questions or if there's a certain topic you want me to cover next, share it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.